John G. Lake advertised himself as a great Christian mystic and storyteller named Abdul Ben Shinandar to his unsuspecting congregation. But when a newspaper reporter discovered his scheme, he had a ready explanation. We're going to be talking about John G. Lake the Arab on this episode. You're going to want to keep watching. Hello and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Whether you are listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you stopping by. And if you are watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it so you'll be notified every time I upload. I try to do that once a week, so don't forget to click the bell. And as always, you guys listening to the podcast, I will make sure that I put a link to this YouTube video in the podcast show notes so you can check that out as well. All right, on to the video. Popular charismatic leaders such as Bill Johnson and Mike Bickle love to promote John G. Lake as a man that God mightily used to heal thousands of people from various infirmities. They refer to him as having miraculous healing powers, elevating him to the status of the most powerful healing evangelist of all time. For only $29.99, you can buy Robert Learden's book on Lake at the IHOP Casey bookstore. Or, for only $15.99, you can buy his book on healing. Here's what the description says from one of the Lake books at the IHOP store. John G. Lake was one of the most powerful healing evangelists of the 20th century. His life's work included countless conversions, healings, and deliverances, as well as the establishment of hundreds of churches and ministries. Now, the wisdom and experience of Lake's teaching on healing have been condensed into one book. Through these teachings, you too can receive physical and emotional healing, discover the spiritual roots of sickness, overcome fear and hopelessness, remove hindrances to healing, defeat the attacks of Satan, walk in divine health, minister healing to others, win souls for eternity, and experience a new joy in your life. The power of John G. Lake's healing ministry and its effects on the world is finally at your fingertips. Healing is available for you and your loved ones today. And just think, you get all of Lake's power at your fingertips for only $15.99. You can find this same book with the exact same caption in the Bethel Bookstore. In his book, Essential Guide to Healing, Bill Johnson at Bethel Church in Reading says this, Reading John G. Lake furthered my quest along the way. His insights into the spirit-filled life are the greatest I have seen anywhere. His insights and stories ruined me. And in his book, Face to Face with God, Johnson gives a short, glowing biography of Lake, which is too long to read here. These men are not telling you the truth about John G. Lake. Lake was a fraud who learned the tricks of the faith healing trade from men like John Alexander Dowie. And as we saw in the last video and we'll see in this video, Lake was an impersonator. In November of 1931, John G. Lake posed as an Arabian Christian mystic and storyteller to his unsuspecting congregation. Here is the ad in the Spokane Chronicle from November 3rd, 1931. Divine Healing, Dr. Lake's Church, 4th and McLean, Sunday only, 3 and 8 p.m., commencing November 3rd, 7.30, at the Big Tabernacle, every night. Special Thanksgiving service, Thursday, 3 p.m. Here, our great Arab preacher and Bible storyteller in native costume, Abdul Ben Shinandar, at the Big Tabernacle, Lincoln and Sharp, commencing Monday, 7.30. As you can see, nowhere in the ad is it ever mentioned that Lake is Abdul Ben Shinandar. The only part of the ad that even mentions Lake at all is where Abdul will appear, and that's at Lake's church. The ad specifically says, Here our great Arab preacher and Bible storyteller in native costume, and then it gives his name under the picture in big and bold letters at the bottom. Here's another ad from the same paper. Dated November 14, 1931. Church Notes Abdul Ben Shinandar, an Arabian Christian, 
who it is claimed was a companion of Lawrence and Adair in Arabia, will appear in Spokane, November 23rd, in the Tabernacle, Lincoln and Sharp, for an evangelistic engagement. The Oriental Christian mystic is being brought to Spokane by the Reverend John G. Lake, who recently purchased the Tabernacle. In this ad, we can directly see that this Arab Christian, who is really John G. Lake, is supposed to be brought by Lake to Spokane to appear at Lake's church. Nowhere does this ad mention at all that Abdul is Lake. Lake was purposely setting out to deceive people coming to this event. It wasn't long, however, before Lake was found out by a newspaper reporter desiring to interview Abdul. Lake tried to make up an excuse, saying that he wasn't sure that Abdul would appear since, quote, he wasn't going over very well. B.S. Hebden, the man who introduced Abdul to the spectators, was the one who revealed Lake's secret identity to the reporter. Here's the article from the Spokane Chronicle, November 25, 1931. Abdul Shinandar is John G. Lake. Abdul bin Shinandar, mentioned as the great Christian mystic and Arab storyteller, is none other than Reverend John G. Lake himself. Appearing in native costume, Abdul bin Shinandar has spoken to audiences at the Big Tabernacle at Lincoln and Sharp this week. Introductions at the evening meeting have been made by B.S. Hebden, local plumber. The Reverend Mr. Lake has a ready explanation for the fact that no hint of the masquerade appears in the posters and other advertisements of the tabernacle meetings. Since the advertisement set forth that Abdul bin Shinandar was the companion of Lawrence in Arabia, a Chronicle representative this morning set out to interview the famous Arab. The Reverend Mr. Lake was reached on the phone. Is he going to appear at the tabernacle tonight? Mr. Lake was asked. I can't say for sure, replied the Reverend Mr. Lake. You see, he hasn't been going over very well. Mr. Hebden was called. He said he couldn't make arrangements for the interview, but that perhaps Mr. Lake could. You see, explained Mr. Hebden, Abdul Ben Shinadar is Mr. Lake. The Reverend Mr. Lake later appeared at the Chronicle. He said, Yes, I am Abdul Ben Shinadar. That is the name under which I am registered in the Society of Arab Storytellers. I am the only Christian missionary ever to be admitted to the Society. I qualified in 1911. In my early missionary life, I made the acquaintance of W.T. Stead of London, editor of the Review of Reviews, and he financed my trip to Arabia, where I remained a year and seven months. I met Lawrence when he was a lieutenant in the British Army long before he came into fame, bringing all the Arabian chiefs together to fight against the Turk in the World War. Often Lawrence and Adair, an important aide of Lawrence and I, slept under the same blanket. Notice that Lake said he was funded by W.T. Stead. Stead was a famous newspaper journalist, and Lake said he was funded by this man for a trip to Arabia. Well, when did this trip take place? I found nothing in my own research that shows Lake spending any time at all in Arabia. In his book, How to Be Filled with Spiritual Power, Harold Chadwick gives a timeline of important events in Lake's life. Let's take a look for a moment at that timeline. March 1870, John G. Lake is born at St. Mary's, Ontario. 1886, Lake receives Christ as Lord and Savior. 1890, Lake receives the experience of sanctification. October 1891, Lake becomes a Methodist minister in Chicago. February 1893, Lake marries Jenny Stevens. 1897, several physicians diagnose Jenny as having incurable tuberculosis. 1898, Lake takes Jenny to the healing home of John Alexander Dowie in Zion City, Illinois, where on April 28th, Dowie prays for her and she's instantly healed of tuberculosis and heart disease. 1901, John and Jenny Lake move their family from Sault Ste. Marie to Zion City, Illinois, where Lake joins Dowie's Institute. 1904, 
Lake moves his family to Chicago and secures a seat on the Chicago Board of Trade. 1907, Lake leaves his insurance business, gives away his wealth, and goes into evangelistic work, casting himself and his family upon God. April 1908, one year after beginning his evangelistic work, Lake and his family leave Indianapolis, Indiana, and head for South Africa to do missionary work. May 1908, John and Jenny and their seven children arrive in South Africa. December 24, 1908, while Lake is attending a native conference, Jenny dies unexpectedly. Early 1909, Lake travels to England. Early 1909, from England, Lake travels with a committee investigating healing in Lourdes, France. 1909, Lake returns to the United States for six months to hold evangelistic services. 1910, Lake and his eight missionaries travel to South Africa. 1910, Lake establishes the Apostolic Church and is elected president. 1912, Lake and his seven children return to the United States and never go back to Africa. 1913, Lake marries Florence Switzer. 1914, Lake establishes an apostolic church in Spokane. 1920 of May, John and Florence move to Portland, Oregon to organize a similar church and healing rooms there. Within a few years, the healing rooms are having the same impact as the Spokane healing rooms. 1924, during revival meetings at Lake's Portland Church, Gordon Lindsay is powerfully converted. 1925 to about 1930, Lake attempts to establish healing rooms in Texas. September 16, 1935, at the age of 65, while pastoring in Spokane, John G. Lake dies of a stroke. As you can see, in this timeline alone, there is nothing mentioned about W.T. Stead financing a missions trip for Lake to Arabia, let alone Lake being in Arabia at all. Wouldn't an important event like this have been recorded somewhere by some biographer? Lake must have been lying to the reporter in order to evade further embarrassment.